Hello students, uh, welcome to my class. Uh, today, uh, this particular chapter, especially Partition of India, which uh, we have uh, already began, and then you have heard al already about the, the partition, the moment has taken place. Uh, it was a joyful moment, but at the same time, it was a very tragedy for the uh, rest of the people uh, who were actually migrating from the different places. So uh, here, I have already talked about that on 15 August 1947, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, in the uh, especially when he gave the uh, or the we celebrated the independence. So at that time, you can see that the uh, rest of the part of the world, in fact, were uh, uh, perhaps were uh, asleep. And uh, uh, at night, especially on a uh, 14th, uh, uh, this uh, August, uh, in the uh, as a constituent assembly, he has given the speech. And I, I have already explained you that how this uh, speech actually gives a kind of like a significant uh, actually moment at that time. So let's say uh, repeat once again the what the speech actually Jawahar Nehru actually uttered on that night. So here uh, the speech was actually uttered. Uh, uh, at uh, 11 p.m. Uh, on a 14 August 1947 so the speech is actually uh, stated this way so long years ago we have uh, we made a uh, trust with a destiny and uh, now the time comes where we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in a full measure but uh, very substantially so at the stroke of uh, uh, midnight hour when the world sleeps india will make to life and a freedom so this is the statement when uh, jawala nehru actually made uh, uh, on that uh, constituent assembly so here on a 15 august 1947 when we talk about jawala nehru as a prime minister of india hoisted the indian national flag above the lahori gate of red fort in new delhi so uh, keep in mind uh, the national flag was hoisted uh, on this uh, day and uh, that is actually in a place called Lahori Gate of Red Fort in uh, Delhi. The next one we have to remember the Governor General and the Ministers were actually uh, sworn it here. Okay, And uh, Jawaharlal Nehru actually took charge as the uh, first Prime Minister of India on August 15, uh, 1947 and was assisted by uh, 15 other members. So uh, ultimately you know once uh, the uh, Minister is appointed then certainly we need the members who can assist uh, to uh, to take the almost the responsibility of the different different uh, departments because uh, if the council of ministers are not there then a prime minister alone can't do the work so therefore here uh, Jawala Nehru actually took a uh, charge as a prime minister and along with him there were uh, 15 other members now, Sadar Patel, you might have heard about Sadar Vallabh uh, Patel. So, Sadar Patel actually served as the Deputy Prime Minister, okay, uh, till his uh, death, especially in uh, December 1950. So, up to 1950, till his death, in fact, he served as a Deputy uh, uh, Prime Minister. And then, uh, uh, Lord Mountbatten, I have talked in a, a couple of uh, classes uh, there. Mountbatten, after the independence, he remained as a Governor General. Uh, it is the request made by the Congress uh, leaders. So you can see that Lord Mountbatten uh, have uh, uh, remained uh, as a uh, Governor General and uh, later on C. Raja Gopalachari, you must remember C. Raja Gopalachari, he served as the Governor General till uh, January 26, 1950. And when India became a republic and uh, elected uh, Rajinder Prasad as its uh, first president. So this is you can uh, understand. Okay. So the first council of ministers uh, of independent India was as follows. Number one, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, prime minister, uh, ministers of external affairs and uh, uh, commonwealth uh, relations, ministers of uh, scientific research. So these are the responsibility Jawaharlal Nehru. Uh, has it undertook then a second one Sardar Vallabhai Patel Sardar Vallabhai Patel what the responsibility actually he got he got the deputy CM then the ministers of home affairs and estates ministers of uh, information and uh, broadcasting then a third one Maulana Abul Kalam uh, Azad okay uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad he got the ministers of uh, ed education okay then a fourth one John Mathai 
he became the uh, minister of railways and uh, transport so uh, and the fifth one sardar uh, baldev singh sardar baldev singh he became the minister of De uh, defense so these are the few members uh, who serve as a uh, council of ministers uh, along with the other members so this is the how the first uh, the activity actually has been taken place so now <coughs> now we uh, we will talk about the integration of prince real estate and i think in my previous classes uh, i have already mentioned about the prince real estate how uh, it came in the or became the part of the indian uh, territories so here uh, we have to give the credit to sardar ballabhai patel since he has been uh, worked as a iron man of india since uh, he is a very much like a close to uh, combining close to gathering the all the princely uh, uh, nawabs and uh, kings and uh, queens uh, to be the part of the indian soil so here uh, sardar ballabhai patel played a key role okay uh, then uh, uh, we remember about the junagar hyderabad and kashmir so this is junagar hyderabad and kashmir actually uh, had the big issue up to now we had the problem in uh, jammu and kashmir even though uh, the article 370 was actually uh, removed uh, okay but uh, uh, even now uh, the issue is still persisting over there so uh, the people of like princely states like uh, junagar then uh, uh, what call hyderabad and also the jammu and kashmir these are the uh, the issue that has been taken place it uh, became a kind of like a uh, issue for the whole through the year now uh, junagar and then uh, hyderabad perhaps not the big issue but jammu and kashmir still uh, the problem is still there are okay so next we have got the integration of french and uh, portuguese territories now uh, you might have seen that uh, uh, the place called like uh, pondicherry karaikal mahe yanam then uh, chandranagar over actually under the french occupation okay and uh, here uh, by like uh, 1954 you must remember this a uh, year uh, 1954 at this time what happened this were actually handed over to india so uh, you can see that uh, after quite a long uh, bit of uh, duration is it not uh, 1947 15 august when we uh, when we celebrate the independence day but here 1954 up to this uh, time the the uh, states like uh, pondicherry karaikal mahe yanam and chandranagar these are the states were actually uh, under the french uh, uh, occupation so next another uh, the uh, what call like uh, portuguese territories that we had got uh, here that is a uh, goa daman and diu and uh, dadra and nagar haveli so these are also actually uh, took time but you know uh, to get this uh, territories uh, people even they uh, fought people even they were uh, agitated and then uh, uh, finally finally we can see that the people of goa especially fought their freedom under the leadership of uh, tristao uh, kunha so tristao kunha uh, a prominent member uh, who actually took the lead of uh, making this uh, goa to, uh, free from this uh, foreigners so ultimately you know the portuguese territories were actually uh, integrated with the india in the year of 1961 so it is a uh, after long uh, gap of this uh, independence so that is we can find another things that we need to remember in this uh, time that about the framing of the constitution okay so the constitution uh, uh, when we took uh, when we have seen that there are uh, the members are selected for forming the constitution after this uh, independence so uh, the significant development after the independence uh, was the framing and the adopting the constitution of india so here we can find that the process that has taken place uh, this is two years and a few uh, months uh, with the help of the dr b r ambedkar was the chair uh, man of the drafting committee then again uh, with the adoption of the constitution in 1950 you know uh, india became a sovereign democratic republic it means uh, on this uh, uh, time especially in this year uh, the country actually became the totally sovereign it means uh, now the country cannot um, depend on other country or other rulers uh, if uh, suppose we have seen already the uh, governor general and, and all were still uh, part of the indian uh, what call like a system so therefore now uh, the uh, the india itself 
will take the decision. So let us say it clearly happened here. So the constitution was actually very progressive document of its time and it is clearly mentioned that the structure of the government and the rights and the duties of the citizens, it granted universal adult franchise. It means uh, through this constitution, people uh, got the right to vote to form the uh, government. So through, by the people, of the people, through the people we, we say, no? So this is the statement actually applied in this uh, time. So here, uh, the the age was actually uh, kept especially for the youth to give the voting right, that is, uh, or to enroll their names uh, when they are reaching the age of 18. So uh, it guaranteed uh, equality before the law to all citizens regardless of their caste, creed, or religion. Now you have to remember, there are many of the, uh, like uh, Dalis and uh, untouchables and uh, uh, tribals were actually uh, very much uh, uh, looked down upon. So these are the incident happen many times and uh, uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar is a part of the that uh, category. So that's why uh, when the uh, document or the when this uh, constitution was uh, framed, so they kept in mind of keeping this uh, uh, part especially. And for that one there was a, a big uh, debate, big uh, like an issue even uh, has taken place where Mahatma Gandhi in fact uh, not uh, allowing Dr. Ambedkar to be separated from the uh, Hindu religion, especially uh, untouchables and uh, tribals and uh, uh, this uh, low caste uh, category of the people uh, were actually wanted the separate electorate, you know. So uh, politically they need to be separate. So that is actually uh, Gandhiji didn't want and uh, as a result Gandhiji uh, remained fasting uh, and then uh, he uh, stopped this uh, moment to happen. So therefore Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was very upset uh, because he knew that uh, in future uh, these people will be again uh, looked down upon and then uh, uh, they will be not given the right and uh, whatever the right, uh, right uh, time uh, was given to them that rights also will be snatched from them. So that is the incidence is today, if you see, it is happening. So today we can see that uh, whatever the reservation is kept now, those reservations are actually uh, trying to remove. And then, uh, you know, uh, people from the backward classes, untouchables, Dalits, all these people are still now under the suppression. So here, in the name of the uh, Dalits and uh, untouchables, you know, government is uh, taking the benefit. But uh, uh, the that uh, facility or the the provision supposed to provide uh, for them it is uh, actually snatched gradually so that is we can see right now but uh, uh, keeping this particular moment uh, dr bhr ambedkar actually uh, suggested that uh, uh, politically they should be given the authority uh, otherwise in future uh, it may not be continue and people may not be uh, like uh, uh, obey so therefore uh, uh, he also said that uh, a person who will become the prime minister uh, and uh, uh, if he doesn't follow the constitution according to the framing uh, of the statements according to constitution suppose the uh, government doesn't follow up then uh, uh, it's no use of the constitution in the country otherwise uh, this is the best constitution in the world so that is actually dr vira Medkar ha has uh, stated in the uh, constituent assembly on the uh, on that day so that is why we have to remember so the practice of untouchability was actually abolished through this uh, uh, application of this uh, constitution in the country so here again they have mentioned the three list this is a uh, three list of the subjects were actually mentioned one is a union list with the subjects such as a uh, taxes defense and foreign affairs for which the central government was responsible and uh, a state list which uh, subjects such as uh, health and uh, education that were the responsibility of the state uh, government and a concurrent list with the subjects like a uh, forest and agriculture which would be the joint responsibility of the central and the state governments. So these are the few things actually uh, stated in this uh, constitution. So in my next uh, video, I will be talking about the formation of the states. Okay. So till till then, thank you and have a good day ahead.